Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. This week on Hot and Cold, we have this thing, which you need to know about. It's plastic, I'll tell you that. Stay with us, you'll find out what it, what it is. Some of you know, I know some of you do, some don't. And you're gonna be so excited. Okay, so here's the secret. This is a plumbing system. This is a manifold plumbing system made by a company called Vega, and it is really cool. I have used this on more houses than I can remember. It's been a long time. It's been around for a while. It's called a mana block, and it's like an um, electrical panel for your plumbing. We've got cold water goes in the bottom. We've got cold water outlets. All the blue are cold. We've got one extra cold one here, and then the red ones are hot. So hot goes in here, cold goes in the bottom here. Cold actually comes out the top as well. I can see right through there. And that would be a feed for either the water heater or a big, big tap. But we're gonna do some plumbing here at my shop today. We're gonna replace the old copper plumbing system with this and we're slowly gonna transition things over. This is made for use with PEX tubing. This is cross-link polyethylene tubing. And what's beautiful about this system is the manifold plumbing system lets you do what they call a home run plumbing uh, operation. And what we do is we run tubing, working with flexible plastic tubing, which is relatively inexpensive. Um, we do a home run from the manifold to each fixture. So as an example, um, we have a bathroom. We have one line goes to the toilet. One line goes to the cold for the bathtub. One line goes to the cold for the lavatory sink. Uh, then we would have a hot that would go to the bathtub and a hot to the lavatory sink. Then we would have another two, set of two that would go to the kitchen sink, to the washing machine, outside faucets, extra bathrooms, whatever. This is an 18 outlet manifold. This is the smallest one they make. And uh, so we're gonna hook it up today just to get started for um, doing a transition on the plumbing system here. Uh, very simple, we have transition fittings that hook on, the, um, hook on the manifold. Here would be one, and they just screw on, they have an O-ring, they're brass, and these are made for connecting the PEX tubing. You can also use, co you can tie copper to this, but PEX is much more flexible. So that's just hand tight. Uh, for the time being, we're not gonna use the pass-through for the um, cold, so I'm just gonna cap that for now. Again, that's hand tight. And then we have a feed through, or not a feed through, excuse me, an inlet for the hot water that'll go here. Again, hand tight, it's just an O-ring. Now for hooking up the PEX tubing, we have some hardware that makes it very simple. We could use crimp connections, which would be a barb fitting like this with the transition that just screws onto these ends. That's a standard three quarter inch uh, pipe thread but there's connectors that are made specifically for this. We're not gonna use that. We're gonna use uh, compression fittings that come with the, um, with the manifold. And it, it's comprised of several different pieces of hardware. There's a big uh, cone that goes over, or nut that goes over the outside. There's an insert that's a stainless steel insert that goes inside the end of the tubing. There's a, uh, a little washer here that is a compression washer. And then there's a, I call it the dew flicker. Uh, that helps to hold that washer in place when this tightens down. So, although this is red, the pipe is color coded. You can have you can get red for hot, blue for cold, or you can just get a um, a white 
for neutral if you want to go that route, the natural color of the um, tubing. Um, so what we do is this inserts into the fitting like so and you can see here the cone goes up against this fitting and we just hand tighten the nut here. This is real high tech stuff. Have you noticed one thing so far? I have done no soldering. I've got solder here, but I'm not using it. And we just hand tighten that, and that would be watertight. We will be doing some crimp connections to tie on, so we are going to need some, some tools, but I'm going to take this off for now. Uh, the hookup, we're going to tie in the cold water. We're going to transition over to the water heater, and we will, uh, our, our first hookup will be a washer dryer valve which I have already set up here. We did do some soldering here. I put two uh, crimp connectors that the PEX tubing would fit onto like so. And I don't have any crimp rings right here with me, but you'll see that in a few minutes, how the crimp connector goes on there, a little bit different. And we'll hook that up in a little while. Right now though, let's go situate the manifold where it's gonna go and we'll get it set up and we won't have the water shut off for too long either. Okay, so we're in a utility closet that is a little claustrophobic, and I don't know if you can see it over here, but we have a big mishmash of pipes. We got T's and we got stuff going everywhere. This is typical of plumbing, with copper in particular. We got T's and we branch off. We try to not use a lot of copper because copper can be expensive and you got to solder everything. So we're going to eliminate this over time. For now though, we're just going to do some transitions and, and get the manifold set up and then we can do the rest at our leisure. I've got a hose over here that's emptying water, so just ignore that noise. Uh, so we shut that off. We shut the water off at the, at the water meter. Um, try to relieve a little bit of pressure. We're going to cut this and it'll probably spew on me, but that's good TV. I think anytime Tom gets wet, we know we have television that's worth viewing. Matter of fact, let's shut that for now. Once we got the shut off there, we can minimize the amount of wetness that I endure. Okay. And then we're going to probably use two wrenches here. One to hold the backflow preventer, and the other to take out this adapter. There's a lot of water in that hose, that's still dribbling. Here we go. All right, we'll let that lean there. We don't want that to flop over. Now I've got a three quarter inch male adapter. We're going to put some Teflon tape on it, and it always pays to take some time when you're putting Teflon tape on and have the tape going in the same direction as the adapter would screw in to the fitting. So if you put it backwards, it's just going to bunch up the tape and not do anything and upset you greatly. So we can tighten this up a little bit, a little bit more. So there's a couple of tricks with using PEX tubing I'm going to show you in a second. But let's mount the manifold. Now I've got a piece of OSB here that I want to mount, I want to mount the manifold to. And I've got some uh, self-drilling screws, although we could use any kind of screw. We could use sheetrock screw or whatever. I just happen to grab these. And That's a one. And I'm going to eyeball that. It looks fairly level. Just happened to have a level with me. It's right on the mark. Super. Two more screws. There's four mounting screws. Three. Four. Okay, so I happen to have, you know, usually I, 
when you do this, it's kind of fun to color code it. <laughs> and I usually don't have the right color, but I did. I got blue. It even has a shut off on it. So we're going to do a little bit of a transition here. Let's start at this end. I'll show you a trick. And we're going to uh, put two three quarter inch crimp rings on this. Okay. Now the crimp ring, this is a little bit different connection than what I showed you. Um, this is a barb fitting, okay, it's got barbs. The tube fits over. There's a crimp ring, which is copper, fits over the outside of that. We have a crimp tool right here. These cost about $100, $120. And we just crimp that connection. Now that's watertight. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Okay. I'll put that sideways so we have some idea of getting over to where we want to be in terms of doing our hookup. And just get that lined up. Crimp it again. Okay, you see where we're headed? We're almost done, except, hey, wait a minute, Tom, that don't line up. There are a couple ways we can do this. We can get a, um, an elbow or a couple of elbows and make some nice rectilinear lines, but we have the broad sweeping beauty of the PEX tubing. So we're going to modify the PEX tubing slightly to get us to where we want to be, which is over here vertical. So we're going almost going to change it almost 90 degrees. Let's get the magic tool for that. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> okay. So what I have here is a to fix my hair. There's so little of it I have to be careful what little is left. Um, we have a heat gun and we have PEX tubing and we can do some magical things with PEX tubing with a heat gun. And that is this. We can heat it up carefully. You can do this with a torch, but your, a heat gun is much more appropriate because we don't have an open flame. With an open flame, we run the risk of setting either charring the tubing or setting it afire, neither of which is a good thing. Now we may see this tube actually start to relax and move because it is, did you see that little spark? Was that on camera? Oh, that's good stuff. Even though it's, it's, it's like an air dryer, hair dryer, um, it is still a lot of energy. So we have to be constantly moving. And we have to get all the sides of it. You can see here I'm starting to get it to go to my whims. I think through the magic of television we have to go because it's going to take a while. Okay, so we're cooling down this tube a little bit now. You can see a little bit of steam coming off it because it's pretty hot. Took about 10 minutes. Probably would have been easier to put some uh, elbows on it, but we don't have to do that if we don't want to. So what we're just doing now is cool, letting it cool down, and I'm holding it pretty much where I want it to be. So it will uh, take this set when it... Um, when it cools down completely, and, and pretty much it's there now. Just gonna hold it for a little bit more. The, the beauty of this is if you take a piece of PEX tubing and you kink it, and I've shown this over the years on TV, uh, you can actually undo the kink by heating it up. The heat will actually repolymerize the tubing and uh, solve any, any plumbing installation faux pas you might create. So I'm going to snip this right here. We're going to put the crimp ring on. The crimp ring is a little out of round. There we go. We're going to slip that onto our backflow preventer. I'm going to 
get it crimped again, and we're hooked up. So with this shut off, I could turn the water back on, and we're golden. As a matter of fact, I can go a step further and turn the water on here. Now the manifold is pressurized. And with all the electric wires on the floor, just to prove the point, it works. And it's holding water. The, the, this is just, I have to tell you, this is just a cool appliance. This so simplifies plumbing in my book that I think every house should have one. Now this is something, the, the mana block is something that you have to buy through a plumbing house. It's for professional installers. But you could save some money by a couple, well if, if you just pay a plumber to do this you're going to save money because the plumber's time is minimal. A lot less. If you have to solder each one of these elbows, think of the time. As opposed to this with crimp connectors, you know, we're doing this pretty much live. Me bending the tube we cut because that's a little odd out there. It takes some time. But the rest of it is no time at all. If you, as a homeowner, want to save some money in terms of having a plumber work with you, you could run the tubing from here, say, to the toilet upstairs. You just unroll it and snake it through the walls and through the ceiling. And, you know, if you have a little bit of, uh, um, if you feel comfortable doing that, it, it's not hard to do. You can save a lot of time and money because you can then let the plumber do the connection here, the connection upstairs for you. And you just do that. It's very simple to do. So we've got a major part of our plumbing system revamped now. The only other thing we're going to do for today, um, unless we have enough time, is I'm going to cut some of this stuff out. And I'm going to cut it right here. Well, actually, we have water in this line, I bet. Yep. We have to relieve the pressure in the system. That this is basically water that's in the pipes. So I get it all over my hot air gun, which is unplugged. All right, I'll get a bucket. If you can't get water on the floor, what good is having a TV show? So this literally ran for about another 30 seconds, not even, no, three seconds. <laughs> so I spilled most of the water on the floor already. That's good TV, though. And as I recall, last time I did this, I got into big mischief because it took forever for the water line to drain, but I got an idea. I have a theory. Yeah, it's going to just gurgle. Okay, we're going to cut, cut the pipe here. This is the feed for all the cold water to the building. This is the pipe we just disconnected here. It comes up here to here. We're going to cut this here. All right. And then we have happen to conveniently have a union here. You see how that's spewing water because we didn't open the drains upstairs? That's going to do that for a while. We'll even put the bucket under it because I'm a neat guy. You knew that. You can tell by the way I dress how neat I am, I know. And we're going to take, we're going to break the union, okay? Let that dribble some more. <laughs> the running water show. All right. And what we'll do for now, we're just doing a temporary hookup here because I do not want to spend the time to run a lot of new pipe. But we can do the retrofit in a leisurely fashion. So we're going to solder a fitting on here, and, and this could be a quick primer in soldering. Whenever you go to solder copper tubing, you see how clean that is? You have to have some sand, emery cloth or sandpaper or something. You need to clean the fitting. Copper gets this tarnish layer on it that will not allow you to bond when you go to solder. So we clean the inside of this fitting, which inserts like that, it's a transition fitting, and the outside of the tube. Then we use soldering flux, which you can buy anywhere. It actually says on the container, solder flux. Okay, and we flux both 
parts that are mating together. So I did the inside of this and the outside of this, put those together like that. Now, we'll take a pair of pliers to hold this because it's going to get really hot. And I happen to have a torch. And this was one of the great creations of the 20th century is a self-igniting torch. I use a map gas torch just because it runs a little hotter than propane. We have solder. And we're going to heat the fitting that is, has the uh, copper tube into it. Now, if you could just zoom in on, on that joint there, and be, not being too jittery, you may notice that all the solder, just, all the flux bubbled away. That means we're about up to temperature. We just touched that joint with solder, and look what happened. Did you see that? The solder just flowed right in to the fitting. That's it. Well, you do-it-yourselfers out there who are intimidated by soldering, it is not hard to do. Now, this is really hot. You can see by the smoke. That's the burning flux. Um, I usually take a damp rag and just wipe the joint down carefully. I let it sit for a few seconds before I do that. And I just wipe it, and then I let it set some more. I actually do this. I touch the end here to slowly cool it down. We don't want to cool down the solder joint too quickly. So we might compromise the uh, integrity of it. There is, a, there is a warranty that comes with this manifold plumbing system from Vega. Its warranty is for, comes uh, only with using all Vega components, but Vega components are very affordable. Like I say, they're available at any plumbing house. I'm just wiping this down now that it's cooled down a bit, and you can see the high integrity of the solder joint that I have performed there this day. And we can take this union now. This sucker's going to be hot, but I'll do it with my bare hands. And we'll spin that back on. And we're basically uh, almost done. We just need to do a transition now. We'll go to uh, this fitting here. Now, when, when you do your connections onto these tubes, we have to make sure that we don't have it yanking around. So we're going to have a support piece here. You can actually take a piece of 2 by 4 and drill holes. They give you a template to put where the holes are to line up with this. So the tubing is supported. Either that or you can put a a piece of wood under here that would be even with this that you could anchor your tubes to. So we're just going to get a piece of tubing to tie that in and we'll have the whole water system back online. Within the span of a half hour TV program we have replumbed. Not everything but close to everything. Alright so I've done the connection now from the manifold to here and I've got another crimp connection. We'll put our crimp tool. Now, this crimp tool is older than most of my kids. I've had this thing forever. And we are done. If we take the magic shutoff valve for the mana block and we turn the valve, plumbing is done. I just have to tighten that up. <laughs> there. It even stopped dripping. And if I tighten up the union that I did, that's the copper, that's not the plastic now. That'll stop dripping. That's it. We've got the whole thing done in record time. And we're going to uh, have more plumbing going on in this closet. You'll see why next week, same time, same place. Till then, thank you folks at Vega, Bangor Pipe and Supply. Vega's covered all over the state of Maine and all over the country for that matter. A great product line. Make sure you check them out. V-I-E-G-A. You'll see where at the end of the show. Dot com. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.